Did your parents ever fill you in on how to really go about living on your own? Advice on things like rent and utilities? Or could they just not wait to throw you out of the house on your 18th birthday so they could go about turning your room into a combination exercise room, office, and hobby station? Well, let's see if anybody else can give us any advice. As the question today is, what should you be aware of before moving out and beginning to live independently for the first time? Story 1. If you're planning to have roommates, you need to discuss and come to an arrangement on things like acceptable cleanliness, boundaries with things like food or other things you've purchased, chores, and general expectations for your living space. Living with friends can be fun, but if you're not on the same page before living, it can be awful and lead to destroyed friendships. I was one of the first to move out at 18, and so many friends and roommates will take advantage of you if you don't figure this out up front. Things like, Why should I take out the trash or clean? I don't mind a pile of trash bags or a sink full of crusty, disgusting dishes. This is just an example of a real argument I had with a roommate. Food is another big one. I tend to like sharing food with people, but some people will not contribute the same quality, or will not contribute at all. I think another thing that you need to worry about is kitchen times. I've had roommates where we've all had to try and cook at the same time. It didn't really work out. Especially when one person is just cooking up some very greasy, very hot hamburgers and just getting oil all over the place. It might help to kind of stagger when everybody gets access. Especially when the kitchen is probably not going to accommodate the amount of roommates that are there at the same time. Story 2. It's easier to clean once a week than wait until your place visibly needs cleaning or tidying. It should take no more than 30 minutes to wipe things down, throw out the old stuff in the fridge, etc. Wait until things get crusty and you'll be scrubbing for hours. Same goes for laundry. If there's a washer or dryer in your new place or on the property, pick a day and do it every week. Waiting until you have no clean underwear is a rookie mistake. Also, it usually makes more sense to wash your dishes by hand immediately after use than wait until they fill a dishwasher. Or worse, stack everything in the sink until they become gross. Cleaning one just-used plate and fork takes less than a minute, whereas having no clean dishes when you're hungry sucks. I learned all of these things from my mother, broke every rule when I moved out, and discovered the hard way that she was right. I completely agree with cleaning once a week. One, for someone like me, it is a form of habit that I can follow. And two, it's very true. Cleaning once a week takes less time. You're not dealing with big, heavy, crusty, disgusting messes. It's just a quick tidying up. Story three, if you're moving in with roommates, you will have conflict. There will be issues about noise, there will be issues about cleanliness, there will be issues about food, about money, you name it. If you're going to go live with people, ask about all of these things. If it's, eh, meh, or we each do our own cleaning, or some stupid stuff, I'm telling you, you're going to hate yourself at some point and wonder how you got in this mess. That 3 a.m. on a Tuesday late night smash session from your roommate next door that you can hear like it's in the same room. That 23 boxes of pizza and four cases of empty beer bottles lying around two weeks after a party. That blasting music or TV all day every day. Some people are jerkwads. Don't leave it up to chance. Choose your roommates wisely and learn to set boundaries. Seriously, it's no different than living with a significant other. It would be hard to be picky for roommates in this day and age when rent is at an all-time high. It would be tempting... But don't fall for it. If the rent on the place is really low, you should be asking the most questions about the roommates. It's like a job interview. This is the place you're going to after work. Is this a person or persons you're going to be able to deal with? Story 4. Landlords are parasites and will take any and every opportunity to mess you over. Never, under any circumstance, trust a parasite. Have every single interaction with them in writing. If they call, tell them to send you an email and hang up. Read up on your local laws and know not only their obligations, but your own, because they will try to make you do something that isn't your responsibility and or refuse to do something that's theirs. 
Take photos or a video of literally everything, every surface, every carpet, every window, every corner, everything, because they will try to blame you for something and keep your deposit or charge you for some made-up hogwash. If you're dealing with an estate agent or some sort of middleman to rent a place, remember that they're salesmen and not your friend, so they will lie to you to make you sign a tenancy. A lab. Story 5. If you live with roommates, beware when they offer food. I had roommates once that always made more food than they could eat and would throw away any leftovers because they didn't like to eat leftovers. They told me I could take the leftovers for lunch at work. All was well until they stopped paying their share of the utilities. It wouldn't be so bad if not for the fact they would leave the lights on all night long while they slept, which ran up my electricity bill. When I confronted them, they told me they shouldn't have to pay utilities because I ate their food. Food which they said they'd throw out anyway. If they had mentioned those strings, I'd never have accepted their generosity. Also, never get into an argument with a roommate when they've clearly gone through half a bottle of whiskey. It won't end well. Story 6. My husband and I were spending too much on eating out every month. It was in our budget but we'd end up going over. This month, we decided not to put it in our budget and not go out at all, but raise our grocery budget a little. It has been so nice. I'm pregnant, and when I have a craving, I have a hard time concentrating on other stuff and a hard time eating food that's not that craving. I was really wanting Panda, but we couldn't go out for it, so I went and bought all the stuff and made egg rolls and fried rice, the Panda recipe, at home. It was so good, and it was something I've never done before, so it was a cool experience. Point is, learning to cook new things can really save you money from eating out. Because honestly, my fried rice was better than pandas. Oh yes, this is a big one. Learn to cook. Uber Eats is not your friend. DoorDash is not your friend. Don't get me wrong, they're not bad in a pinch but they're not something you should rely on. You can go to any bookstore, heck, any used bookstore, and there are about 12 million cookbooks out there. Heck, go to the library, spend a day, read up. I think there's even recipes on this thing called the, uh, what is it? The internet. That's right. Story 7. Learn what you can buy from a dollar store, what you can buy generic brands of, and what you need to buy name brands of. For example, I wouldn't buy Ziploc bags at the dollar store. You get like eight to a box when you could spend the extra $2 on a 100 pack. But I would buy the generic brand from a grocery store. Except if I was buying the freezer bags, then I prefer the name brand. Same with things like cream cheese. Get the name brand. Condiments. Get the name brand. Cleaning products. Dollar store, etc. You'll find out where you prefer to buy certain things from. But also... Don't cheap out on things like toilet paper or the things you really like. If you love your brand name potato chips, don't get the generic kind. If you like pickles, splurge and buy the big jar. After a few grocery trips, you'll know what you like to have around and what you can sacrifice. Story 8. All the bills you're responsible for and how much your grocery shop will cost. In the UK, there's rent, council tax, TV license, gas, electric, internet connection, entertainment, Netflix, etc. if you use them, travel costs if you take the bus or train, car upkeep, payments and fuel if you drive, contents insurance, car insurance, mobile phone contract, pay-as-you-go costs, and your grocery costs. Then, once all your living costs are considered, then there's any other bills you may have. Example, credit card bills. Anything left over, you have to consider furniture, if you don't have any, clothing, shoes, gifts for family or friends, birthdays or Christmas, keeping money saved for emergencies, example, car repairs or replacing an expensive electrical item, and or any holidays you'd like to go on. And then finally, whatever is left for your own enjoyment. Story 9. Definitely learn to cook. It's much cheaper eating home-cooked meals but way less enjoyable unless you know how to throw a few decent dishes together. If you're renting from a private landlord and are responsible for utilities, try to get information on average utility bills. 
I once rented a super uninsulated apartment with electric heat, and my energy bill peaked at $600 for a single month one winter. That hurt. Before you even move out, keep an eye out for deals on pots or pans and other durable items that you need on Facebook Marketplace and other secondhand sites. Be extremely careful with any soft furniture or rugs that you buy on the cheap, or possibly avoid it altogether and go new. A bed bug infestation is no fun. Also, don't overlook thrift stores. Where I'm at right now, there are a lot of thrift stores. You can find deals on a lot of stuff, including dishes and pots and pans. You can look them over right there to see if they're clean enough. You can also get some good deals on some cheap rice cookers or slow cookers, even furniture. If you're the type that worries that someone's going to give you grief because you bought half of your stuff at a secondhand store, just don't tell them, and then reconsider your friendships. It sounds like that friendship would cost you a lot more than you can afford anyway. Story 10. Take pics of the apartment before moving your stuff in. The carpet, the floors, baseboards, everything, just to cover your butt. Some landlords are total pieces of work and will try to keep security for a stain in the rug that was there when you moved in. Happened to me once. I moved out of a place and they tried to claim my deposit by saying they needed to thoroughly clean the house after I moved out of it. The contract said it needed to be left in the same condition as when I moved in. I sent them photos of the day I moved in, showing amongst other things the mold on the walls, the dirty oven, and the previous tenant's toenail clippings on the bedroom floor. Technically, I did not leave toenail clippings behind, so it wasn't in the exact same condition. Story 11. Live cheap until you have a financial backup plan and cash to back it up. Stuff happens, and you might need to haul whole lot of a bad place ASAP. What are your local renter laws? Who can you call to help you move? Do you have rent and bill payments for a month or two if you lose your job? Basically, have a oh-snap-and-run plan for your living place. Second, fire up your maps program and see what's around your neighborhood. Nice way to find local businesses not on main streets or public hangout places like parks and walking trails. Finally, the library is your friend. Free internet, free books, and cheap movie or game rentals. Scanning and printing services. Great for free entertainment and self-betterment when everything else is too expensive. Story 12. Chances are you'll be living with a roommate or housemate. Choose wisely. Try and find a roommate who has similar interests to you, likes to be as tidy as you, has a job and you feel comfortable with. Be wary of renting with friends. I lost three good friends that way. Be considerate to your new roommate. They're not your parent and may feel resentment if you expect them to pick up after you or carry the entire household burden on their own. Basically, don't be a jerk. Don't be intimate with them. And don't do things like have your partner stay all the time. The same goes in reverse. They should be just as considerate to you. And finally, if you don't feel comfortable living with that person, don't stay in that situation. That one ties in with the previous one. Find someone that you feel comfortable and compatible with, but have a plan to get out if that falls through. I'm sure we've had situations where the person seems great when you talk to them about the place, but once you live there, they totally change. I know for a lot of people it's hard to budget, but try to get a backup plan instead of just living paycheck to paycheck. There are some people who are willing to prey on others just because they can assume that they're living paycheck to paycheck and have no other options. Story 13. I've been burned by the poorly insulated apartment slash electric heat combination. Old whole apartments that feel fine when you turn them in April and are great when you move in in August, but then turn on you in winter. Mixed with electric baseboard heaters and oof. I remember seeing my breath in my first apartment. I refused to turn the heat on any higher as we had a $400 electric bill. All the heat went straight out the window. I talked to my neighbor and he had an $800 electric bill in January of 17. I have another apartment that isn't well insulated and has stupid electric baseboard heaters. I'm winterizing my apartment this week. I'll be putting that plastic wrap looking stuff around all the windows. Hopefully it helps. Story 14 A spacious apartment or house with vaulted ceilings looks nice, 
but you're the one that will be cleaning and heating or cooling it. Those higher ceilings and big rooms cost so much more for gas slash electric, not to mention rent. Those big rooms are great for entertaining, but you still have to sweep, mop, vacuum, clean them all by yourself, unless you have a roommate. If you do get a roommate, don't live with a friend or a new significant other. Living with someone is one of the fastest ways to destroy a relationship. Familiarity breeds contempt. It's a lot easier to like someone when you don't have all their bad habits being shoved down your throat or you're able to get away from them. Not that there aren't exceptions. Story 15. Thoroughly Google the person renting you the new place. Take pictures of the furniture and walls there. We didn't do that with my friends and we were evicted a few months after moving in because our landlord was a straight-up psycho and certified sociopath. We nearly ended up in court over money he refused to give us back. Be sure that you calculate your expenses. Monthly food, entertainment, and emergency money. Just read that you're from CZ, so am I. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a PM. I had to move back with my parents after three years because I broke my leg and then corona hit. I can definitely tell you the ups and downs of moving away. The budget thing is very key. If you don't want to pay the Microsoft rental fee for Excel, learn how to use Google Sheets. It's not that hard. It's really easy to set up a monthly budget. Once you have it set up, you can just copy that page for each new month. Once you get used to it, you can even use it to help you project into your upcoming expenses. Very helpful. Story 16. If you're renting, remember, all the stuff you buy, you have to move in a couple of years. All the little knickknacks add up. So do books, so do dishes, etc. I started keeping this in mind when I was renting after tossing probably $1,500 worth of stuff I couldn't sell and didn't want to move. That is very good advice. It's your first place, still young and experienced. Live simple, learn, and in the future you can find a cozy place to rent or buy for the years. Don't buy unnecessary things. Save everywhere and always if you can. Leave some money to the side. You never know what can break or go wrong. Story 17. I didn't see it posted here, but my now wife taught me a very valuable lesson 10 years ago. Your money isn't yours. At any given time, someone just takes it away from you. Didn't see the sign? Your car just got towed. Easily $200 gone. I'm in Texas and have a full-time job. I went to the ER recently and have insurance. $2,000 visit. Car parked overnight, not in the garage? Stereo stolen randomly? Your money isn't yours. People with more of it just take it from you. Make a savings. Get six months of expenses in it. Do it as soon as possible. Then, get your Roth IRA maxed out yearly. Don't steal from your future. It'll be an amazing nest egg. Follow those two, and you're on a very good path for your future. Story 18. Regardless of your income, you can manage your expenditures to match. Take the time to learn how much money you spend and manage accordingly. One meal out will cost $10, but if needed, you can make a chicken soup that will last six to eight meals off the same $10. Mooch off someone with a Costco membership to buy a $30 bag of rice that will feed you for a year. Do what you need to do to make sure at the end of the month, your bank account is bigger than what you started with. Probably once a year, something big will sneak up on you in the order of $1,000, like car repairs. And if you weren't lean during the good times, the bad times will really suck. It is difficult to live within your means. Everyone wants to feel extravagant and fancy once in a while. Everyone wants the convenient meal or the convenient time out. But convenience costs. It's like the previous thing said, your money is not your own. It also ties back in with the budget. Once you track some expenses, you can figure out what you can afford and what you can cut back on and what you could possibly spend more money on. Story 19. The person who is great fun to hang out with might be dreadful as a roommate. Life is not a continual party. Shared apartments work best among people who are honest, responsible, and clean. Living with a friend really does make or break the relationship. People I've lived with 20 years ago are still my dearest friends with some of my best memories. 
Others, I never spoke to again because of irreparable conflicts. I've learned that it's the little things that sneak up too, and that irreconcilable differences in lifestyle, expectation, habits can drive people apart. Story 20. Turn on the shower when viewing the property and think to yourself, can I live with this water pressure? This is smart. Also, find out how long it takes for the water to get hot and how long the heat lasts. I'd ask the landlord to turn the shower on during the showing, just to see how it works. Offer to pay for the water or heating for those minutes you normally use for a shower. If they get grumpy, it'll be worth the knowledge. Story 21. First floor of an apartment building gets robbed the most, and deals with bugs, mice, rats, etc. that upper floors don't always have to. It's easier to move your stuff, though. Keep your windows and doors locked, and don't keep expensive things like computers and game consoles within view of the windows. My last apartment was third floor. It sucked moving in and out, but it was relatively quiet for how thin the walls were, and in the winter, the heat would hardly ever run. The AC got expensive in the summer, though. Never a single ant or spider, which is nice. I can agree with this one, too. I actually can't remember a time where I lived in an apartment that was on the bottom floor. One cool thing about apartments above ground floor is you don't have to worry about the balcony. The higher up you are, the more you can leave that unlocked. And usually you don't have to worry about having the curtains closed for any privacy. That gives you more options when you're managing with the weather. Whether you need a breeze or whether you need to keep things closed, you've got more options. And you don't have to worry about thieves as much. Story 22. The amount of things you have to buy adds up fast. Stuff your parents wouldn't have made you pay for at home. Toilet paper, paper towels, cleaning supplies, toothpaste, hand soap, dish soap. I feel like it seems you mostly just need to budget for food, but that's not the case at all. That stuff adds up. And for me, it feels like as soon as I budget for one thing, something else runs out that I have to buy too. If you have the money up front, buying in bulk is much more convenient and will save you a lot of time and money overall. But, of course, not everyone can afford that. Story 23. If you're moving with roommates, ask about their pet peeves and discuss a basic schedule. Pet peeves might be leaving bags next to the door, putting paper plates in the trash face up, leaving water bottles around. If these match up to things you tend to do, be aware of them. They will cause tension later. As for schedules, what time do you go to bed and wake up? Are you guys light or heavy sleepers? Do you have smoothies for breakfast at 6 a.m.? Play the drums at midnight? Have your partner over to visit every weekend? Know that if you sleep till noon and your roommate likes to start their day with Zumba in the living room at 7 a.m., you better be a heavy sleeper. Stuff like that. Story 24. Whatever you were doing before for savings, you're going to have a tougher time doing it. But don't let your savings take a back seat. Continue to look toward the future. Also, in the interest of saving... There's nothing wrong with moving back home, if you've got good folks. But my girlfriend and I moved back to my parents to continue to save for a house. And even though a lot of people talk about it, not one person explains adequately enough how hard it is to live back in your parents' place after being on your own. I have an amazing, inclusive family, and it's still difficult a lot of days. It depends on the parents, of course, but it would be great if they had a guest house. Heck, even a garage converted into an apartment. I also think it makes sense to sit down and have a conversation with them. They are your parents, but this is still a living arrangement. It doesn't hurt to figure out what everyone is going to like or dislike. You've known each other a long time, and some people in the relationship might have changed over the years. Story 25. You don't have to buy new. I have sourced tons of used home goods for cheap or free through the following. Thrift stores, Craigslist, Habitat Restore, Facebook Marketplace, Nextdoor, rich neighborhoods dumping perfectly good furniture on the curb, Facebook Buy Nothing Group, or a local Facebook group, depending on your location. Today, I bought a topographical map of Yosemite, a soap dish, high-quality Tupperware, a serrated knife, Velcro for craft projects and a book at the local thrift store for $5. Last week, I got a shovel for free. It takes time, patience, and knowing the neighborhood, but I enjoy the hunt. Best of luck. Story 26. It's not necessarily a ton of hard work to keep your house clean. 
It's small, consistent habits that break up the workload and make efforts more effective, and you'll need to actively create those habits for yourself. Wiping and cleaning things frequently to maintain equals less work scrubbing off crusted material than if you left it build up for a while. Vacuuming the whole house instead of one room at a time lowers the amount of time before the floors get dirty again. Picking up a few things off the floor each day means fewer time spending the whole day organizing a big pile of junk. If you wash dishes as you make dinner, there won't be a massive pile to tackle after eating. Story 27. Make sure you check out and photograph every little thing that is even slightly broken or discolored before moving in. Most managers are pretty cool about things and are usually aware and are fine with it. But if they get bought out, the new company might be douches. Also, I live in a town that is basically a giant anthill. Everyone has sugar ants pop up somewhere at some point. I generally always put ant traps around the apartment when I move in and never have any major problems. Except once. Great regrets. So much harder after the fact. Again, hopefully that doesn't seem to be as much of a problem with apartments that are not on ground floor. Doesn't mean they can't reach up there. Hopefully you can lessen the problem, at the very least. And again, document everything. Do take pictures of everything that you can. Cover all the bases. You never know when you'll need some proof to back you up. Story 28. If you're renting, for the love of God, read, read, read your contract. There's so many crazy things that could be hidden in there. Know what happens if you must break your lease and be okay with that. Good luck. Know what utilities the landlord pays, usually trash, sewer, and heating. Maybe water, and which ones the tenant pays. Sometimes electricity, cable, internet. The electric company will turn off your power for failing to pay and charge you an arm and a leg to turn it back on. Story 29. You have to pay for everything. Nothing is going to be free, and you'll have to buy stuff you never thought about before. Not just bills, but stuff like cleaning supplies, mop and vacuum, light bulbs, garbage bags or cans, pots and pans, plates, bedding, extension cords, tools, etc. When you move out, make sure you have everything you need or are able to get what you need. It will surprise you the amount of things you never thought about needing until you no longer have access to those things. Story 30. Even if you found a place to rent, make sure you have a plan of where to go temporarily in unforeseen circumstances. The lady I'm renting from terminated my lease in the middle of COVID because she wanted to take in her mentally ill brother who had nowhere to go. She did give me two months to find a place, but if you're on a budget, finding a good place within your means might take longer than that. Not to mention checking out the place, running a background check, and all that. Story 31. Don't get things on credit. Don't be afraid to buy secondhand. Don't get a loan. Edit. So there has been some concerns regarding don't get credit. If this is your first time living independently, then if I were you, I would avoid things on credit for the time being. It's a case of use credit at your own discretion. However, there are some valuable points made below, so don't immediately dismiss them. Just be careful is all I'm saying. Story 32. Make a checklist of routine things you want to stick to. Tidy up after meals every day. Gym however many times a week, out of bed by X every day, and so on. It's really easy to let things slide when you're on your own, and all the little things can add up and eat at your self-worth. Before you know it, your I'll do the dishes tomorrow turns into I have nothing to eat off of and mice. Story 33. The best advice I have for those planning on living on their own soon is write down what you do or use daily for about a week. Literally every single thing you do and use. It will give you an idea of what you're going to buy on your own and will help you sort your budget. This is great advice, but it should be done for at least one full month. Different expenses have different timelines. Bi-weekly this, monthly that, and so on. Story 34. Make it your space. When people visit, they're going to see the real you. Do you want them to see laundry piled up and dishes everywhere? Or are they going to see someone who's got their stuff together, cool stuff on the walls, or whatever it is you like? Remember, 
Stuff won't be handed to you. Make it your space to learn and grow as a human. It's only just started. Story 35. Keep some extra tins of food. Stuff you use but that don't go out of date quick like dry pastry and rice as well. Just make sure you use it when it's close to going out. I swear it took away a lot of stress for me when suddenly people started panicking buying at the start of COVID. Even if the store was to be stripped bare, I would still have enough extra. And no need to go full prepper mode or anything, just take a shelf in the cupboard. Story 36. Even if you're renting and it's not your forever home, decorate, hang a picture, get a plant, etc. No need to break the budget on this at all. But my fiancé and I live in an apartment and we didn't hang anything on the wall until about 10 months in. It made a huge difference once we hung a few photos. Made it feel much more like home. And don't stress too much about holes in the wall. They're easy enough to patch when you move. Story 37. The best thing I did was eventually get a car. It breaks down the barrier to so many activities and events. No more reluctance, procrastination, or excuses. I met the most important people in my life because of the events I attended and teams I joined. I can volunteer weekly, and people are often surprised that I'm not local. I spent most of my work-from-home extra time hiking, and I can even do astrophotography even if I don't have a backyard. Story 38. How to shop for groceries and cook your own food. This is the number one area that people flush money down the toilet, along with the Taco Bell diarrhea. A single person can easily live on $50 a week for food. I've seen a single person spend $400 on food in a week. You should also have a good routine on cleaning your space, not just your room, but the kitchen and bathroom as well. Story 39. Live in the space for a bit before you go wild buying everything you think you need. What to eat, something to eat or cook with, and then add things gradually. You may find that you don't need everything you think you do, or you might want something different. Doing this will save you money and let you be more selective, i.e. waiting for a sale to buy a TV, decor, whatever. Story 40. The more stuff you have that you value and care to replace, the more stuff you're going to have to replace when it gets broken, breaks down, gets lost, or stolen. Also, car insurance is billed every six months to a year. I was shocked when the insurance salesman quoted me a few hundred dollars. I had to ask my mother why that was. Honestly, I thought I was going to be paying that every month. Story 41. You're going to get in arguments with the people you live with. Don't let it get in the way of relationships. Best way to avoid this is by adding all your bills up together, dividing by four, and putting this amount aside each week. Then, pay all bills on time each month and save yourself a lot of unnecessary stress with whoever is in charge of the bills in the house. Story 42. Buy things like a plunger, fire extinguisher, etc. before you need them. Always best to have something before an emergency hits. Meet your neighbors. Always good to see the people in your area, who you might want to be friends with, who you might want to keep at arm's length, etc. Don't let people, be they family or friends, trash your place. It's your place and your rules. Story 43. What natural gas smells like. Had a friend who left hers on via an unlit stove and complained about headaches for a few days. Until someone happened to come over to her apartment and realize what was happening. For some reason, she had gone 24 years without learning about what gas smelled like, or why you would want to make sure not to leave it on. Story 44. Animals are wonderful living companions, and can make living alone so much more bearable but they can be incredibly expensive to upkeep, especially as they age. It also makes traveling incredibly hard if you have pets but no one to watch them or keep them whilst you're away. Kenneling alone can cost hundreds of dollars for a pupper, and even more for two. Story 45. I'm 16, but my aunt recently moved into and out of an apartment. Just because it looks clean doesn't mean it's perfect, and check reviews of a place before actually deciding to move in or not. Also, don't talk to strangers. And if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend that just isn't cool, drop their butt. All right, good luck. You'll be fine. Story 46. Get a plant or plants. They can brighten up an area in the winter. Caring for something can be helpful to keep yourself in a routine. You can also grow some for food. I had a garlic clove sprout in the fridge, so I planted it. 
I'm not saying you need to go all urban farmer, but it can be fun as a project. Story 47. Aside from taking pictures of the apartment or house you move into, make sure that you get roommates that are financially responsible if you're going to split the rent. Nothing sucks worse than having a roommate come to you and say, I can't make my rent. Can you loan me 50 bucks? Because that'll become a habit real quick. Story 48. Beware that your first apartment is most likely going to be filth because of the excitement to move out on your own. Don't go for the very first place that you see. Judge it heavily. Look at everything. Also, beware of neighbors. If they're in the same building and one of your neighbors has a bug problem, it's everyone's problem. Story 49. There are lots of things worth getting at the dollar store initially, then replacing as you deem them important. Hand towels, toilet paper, paper towels, and most things you eat should be bought elsewhere. Name brand seasonal things can be great at the dollar store. Easter themed Ziploc bags, holiday hand soap, summertime plastic cups and plates, etc. Story 50. Get a slow cooker. You'll have fun cooking for the first couple of weeks, but it can become a chore, even if you enjoy it most nights. Get a slow cooker. Make chili or pulled pork and set it overnight or before you leave for work. Then when you come home, dinner is ready to go for a fraction of what takeout costs. Story 51. Buy a plunger before you need it. An add-on would be if the toilet does get plugged, do not flush again. Turn off the water supply to the toilet and wait until the water level goes down enough to use the plunger. Once the toilet is unclogged with the plunger, you can flush again. Story 53. That your parents were right when it comes to housekeeping and that you will learn this lesson real quick. That you need to cook food yourself. My mother was most certainly not right when it comes to housekeeping, and I still struggle with the complete disregard for cleaning I grew up in. I'm doing better than she did, at least. Story 53. Dishes are a pain in the butt. Don't just leave a dish for later, because it only makes it easier next time. After a while, you have a sink full of dishes with dried-on food that will take half an hour to clean. If you do each dish when it's dirty, it'll be easier to clean and you'll always have clean dishes. Story 53. Do not put liquid hand dishwashing liquid in the dishwasher machine. If you do this, it will foam up and flood everywhere like an episode of I Love Lucy. If you did this and turned on the dishwasher just before going to bed, that flood will sit all night and ruin the kitchen floor and you won't get your security deposit back. Story 55. Learn how to use a washer and dryer. Do not put the powder in the top. Put it either on the clothes, slash water, or in the compartment it goes in, if it does, or in the cylinder in the middle, but not in the cylinder lid on the middle. People don't know how to wash clothes. Story 56. Decorating is fun. Even if you're not super into design, get some curtains in a color you like. Put up a few framed posters. Get a plant and a comfy blanket. It really does make a difference, and it will make the place a lot more welcoming to visitors. Story 57. Only lend what you can afford to lose. You want your roommates and neighbors to like you for convenience at least, but don't trust them with anything you can't afford to replace. Even accounts, because they can charge extra stuff to your card or lock you out of your account. Story 58. In a couple of months, you may think you're lonely because you've been alone for longer than you're used to, but don't panic or take that feeling seriously. It's all part of the journey, and use those moments to read something new or learn a new skill. It's the best time for growth. Story 59. Meal planning. I still suck at it, but it's such an important skill. It'll save you so much time and money in the long run. A Costco membership is also great if you can spare the cash and have room for bulk items. Their housewares are fantastic and will save you money. Story 60. I know it sounds old school, but literally write out when your bills are due. Missing a few payments here or there may seem like no big deal, but they follow you for seven years, and every future renter and creditor will judge you unrelentingly harsh for it. Story 61. Set yourself a routine for chores and errands. We do all of our errands on Sunday and then do chores after. And try to do some dishes and sweeping throughout the week to make that day easier. It's all about discipline, which I do not have.
Story 62. It's cheaper to eat at home than going out. I'll jump in on this one. Get a crock pot or slow cooker and a Tupperware set. Then Google all the amazing and incredibly easy recipes that will provide you meals for days. Story 63. Take pics of the apartment before moving your stuff in. The carpets, the floors, baseboards, everything. Just to cover your butt. Some landlords are total... This one I already read. We've got to get past this because I already read this sucker and other people have made this point before. Story 64. Distances to places you regularly go. Whatever your mode of transportation, you need to take that into account when choosing a place to stay. It may seem reasonable, but having to travel miles to the store will add up. Story 65. There's no magic involved in how everything seems to tidy itself up. Clothes being cleaned in the closet suddenly, beds getting made, etc. Someone actually does it. And in your new home, that special someone is you. Story 66. How much extra stuff you never realized you needed and how much stuff costs. Soap dispenser, paper towel holder, all the things to hold your toilet brush, etc. Why are garbage cans so expensive? Story 67. Boundaries. Everyone and their dog is going to want your place to be the chill place. And before you know it, your BFF has clothes in your closet and food in your fridge, which is great until they start acting like a roommate that doesn't pay for anything. Story 68. How to budget for things. Life is hard. Don't make it harder by mismanaging money. If you don't need it, don't buy it until you know you've got all the things you do need covered. Save money for a rainy day. Because stuff happens, and often at the worst times. Story 69. Nice. Get your staple items sorted out. Small stuff that adds up. Shampoo, toothpaste, spices, etc. Hell, even toothpicks and aluminum foil. Laundry detergent, cleaning supplies. You don't realize it until you need it. Story 70. Remember to budget for the small things you might take for granted. I once went to a friend's apartment where they had just moved in, and they didn't even own a pair of scissors or a trash bin. Story 71. Familiarize yourself with the renter's rights in your state. I can't count the number of landlords who took advantage of me in different ways because I didn't know what my rights were. Story 72. Buy secondhand furniture and electronics. You'll probably move a million times as a young adult, and new stuff is an unnecessary expense. Save your money till you settle down proper. Story 73. The initial feelings of loneliness was weird at first knowing people weren't just in the next room or going to come walking through the door later. Took some getting used to, but learned to love it. Story 74. Make a list of every object you use in a day. Then buy what you need when you move. Not having a ladle or a toilet brush can put a stop on plans or make things awkward. Story 75. Ask what the average for utilities are in your building and budget for that amount if not more, every month. Pay them on time. They will dent your credit report if you don't. Story 76. Bad habits. Without people around, it might be easier to fall into them and harder to get out. For instance, be wary of becoming dependent on alcohol, video games, etc. Story 77. How to be a complete and total cheapskate when necessary. How to scavenge. How to do without basic things. Where to get various things for free. Story 78. Don't be too trusting of people you don't know, especially if they're trying to sell you something. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Be aware of your naivete. Story 79. If you're buying used furniture, make sure to thoroughly inspect it for bedbugs and their eggs before buying it and bringing it into your home. Story 80. Keep it clean. If you're by yourself, you don't need to clean all the time, but you do need to clean. Don't let your house smell like butt. Story 81. You have to clean your kitchen way more than you ever expected. Also, you will have a favorite burner on the cooking range. Nobody expects it, but everyone has it. Story 82. Neighbors can suck. They can make your first place a living hell, no matter what you do or don't do. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.